Well, uh, I assume uh, this is just the beginning with the release of Bats and everything. You guys are definitely, you know, going to be in the, on the road a lot. Um, now, I'm just curious about the record. How long has this been in the works? Long time. Long, long time? Two years? 2022, mm-hmm. most of the, the effort was taken in, if I remember. I could be wrong, but... We were writing at the start of 2022, though, weren't we? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. It was kind of two, it's two years all in. We took a while to record it because a few things happened. Uh, you know, Domo had a baby and I uh, bought a house. So that kind of real life stuff meant that we paused for various points. But um, we recorded most of it last year, didn't we? Yeah, it was all in 2022 that was recorded. I think we did bits and pieces maybe January of this year. Well, vocals went on into this year, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because, as I said, because I was kind of Johnny Johnny last. Uh, the lads had already, Joe had done all of his in, what, September, October, Joe? It was a while back. But uh, there was a kind of thing with this record, though, that uh, as I kind of hang up from the uh, the lockdown, there was really, really severe uh, waiting times for vinyls and stuff. So even if we kind of wanted to kind of finish the record very quickly, um, at the end of 2022, we wouldn't have really been able to um get it out any time before now. Anyway, you know. Yeah, they were very. The label were very clear that it was going to be like a nine month delay. Between, wow. Yeah, handing it in and getting it released. So, uh, that's what we've been doing. Really, like we handed it in at the, the start of this year, like or six months or something, or seven months or something like that. So yeah, we handed it in early this year, and we've been kind of you know making videos and getting things ready and stuff since then. Wow. So I heard this is the uh the weirdest album the band has ever put out. Um now I'm curious, what makes this record stand out from the rest of the discography? What do you think, Jar? Uh we have probably what stands out? Probably just we have kind of guests you could say on the album that we never had before, and they're kind of left field as well. Most people, most bands you kind of get a guest guitar player or vocalist. It's kind of someone that's uh, a little bigger than them and they you know they they kind of come in because you know they're asked to not because they want to or they're interested they're kind of just yeah. like okay but but we got people that actually were interested in doing it and totally left field as well not in their style so it's kind of that's probably what's different and yeah more do that particularly in our genre anyway <laughs> and i think it's uh, of course we can see a lot of shades of gray where other people don't because we write the music but um, I, I think it's definitely our most varied album. It's our most diverse musically. Like it has a tune or two that are like hard rock songs on it. And then it has punk stuff. It has thrash metal. You know, it almost has some like groovy little things on it as well. You know, and it, it has some quite eccentric choices <laughs> uh, put in there. <laughs> and I, I like my take on it is that it's very ballsy. It came out of a place of being very comfortable. The last record, we pushed the boat out a little bit in terms of the songwriting. That was well received, and I think that made us much more ballsy about doing it again. Um, and I think as well, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what you think, lads, but I think getting older has been part of that too. We're less concerned about constantly having to hit the same button um, and hit the same mark and sound the same all the time. And I think that's been quite freeing. It has definitely made it more interesting for me, uh, being given a, like a song like Bats in Your Hair or, um, you know, Dream Stealer. It's very interesting to sing songs like that. They're different, you know. Egypt is a very different kind of song to sing than most of our stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. What what do you what do you what say you, Joe? <laughs> um, yeah, like I guess like having a wider range of influences is really what it is. In the past, I guess we kind of talked about this a little bit. You would get your influences second hand. So instead of being overtly Iron Maiden or Judas Priest. We would have been overtly Agent Steel or you know Hellstar kind of thing, you know. Whereas, like, I think we feel a little more comfortable now being all like, okay, let's put a Dio type bit in here, or let's try and do something kind of different. Because some of the kind of reviews we've been seeing as well, people are kind of saying that this doesn't sound like the sort of thing that should work for Gamma Bomb doing something that's more like hard rock, heavy metal in places. But you know, like. If the option for us is to start writing really slow, boring thrash songs or to start writing upbeat, heavy metal songs, we'll start doing that instead, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it feels like we did fit that stuff. And, you know, we're always saying this, but ultimately it's about it's about what pleases us and makes us happy. 
and we've found that if we're if we're doing stuff that entertains each other and pleases each other we're very lucky now that we have a group of fans you know people who are all around the world who tend to like it when we're doing that stuff you know we're quite lucky in that way if we do something that works for us there's a pretty good chance that group of people will dig it and that's that's what matters really you know like we're not totally like we're not out there trying to write sad but true and you know smash the mainstream <laughs> or whatever it is you know like that's that's for other bands to try to do <clears throat> you know we're trying to uh keep ourselves happy number one and uh please the people who will like it <laughs> number two you know yeah I, I know what you mean that's so interesting to hear because uh it makes sense because you guys have such a consistently good discography and you see like a lot of those first wave of thrash bands kind of fall off they they kind of did it in like the 90s and whatnot where i feel like you guys have been so consistent because you're not afraid to experiment and do your own thing and as a fan it's really awesome to see you know because it's not like, like let's just try to recapture you know yeah, look, early I mean, 2000 case stuff point. like case in point man you're you know you're saying things like you guys have been experimenting i think the vast majority of people who have heard more than one record by our band probably wouldn't even realize there is any var variation there <laughs> it's time so that in itself is quite heartening <laughs> to hear <laughs> uh, yeah i don't know like those, all those bands in the 90s and stuff we get asked about that a lot you know um because we made when we were younger we made such a big deal out of talking about oh bands in the 90s taught us what not to do and stuff uh you know i suppose any band who's been around for a long time are going to have dips by our standards we think we're we have records that aren't as good as other ones and we have songs that we would never play live and songs that we laugh about and we think are crap. So I suppose it just, it, maybe we were lucky that the genre was already half dead and we were out of the glare of public scrutiny for the vast majority of our mistakes. <laughs> I get like... <laughs> you know what I mean? that, yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, Forts of Habit come out when everybody was looking. You know, it's <laughs> between the lines no one was looking, so... <laughs> though is also that like i think a lot of our contemporaries aside from you know making whatever choices that you know they couldn't continue you know the way that we did where we could make an album every couple of years was that i think what happens a lot of bands is after you make two or three records you end up having some sort of legal disputes or label disputes because bands really? usually sign records when they're young and dumb and then whenever they're into it it's either a case of Right, do you want to try and grow up a little bit and sort out our finances and all and get this, or do you want to just break up? And I think that's what happens a lot of a lot of bands or a lot of our contemporaries anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, this record bats is coming out on prosthetic records. Um, what's it like working with that label? Great. Uh they're very chill. EJ, who owns the label, uh, has been a fan of the band since about 2008 and he kind of just he just kind of came out of the woodwork i saw him on twitter <laughs> and uh, i was like oh it's the guy who's prosthetic and um i just dm'd him and i was like oh we're looking for a label and he was like i've been a fan for years and it was just you know he's he's a true believer you know he loves sick metal and he loves metal that doesn't take itself too seriously and luckily we fit in the middle of that Venn diagram so he had always been there in the shadows somehow keeping an eye on us um, and then it was really good on an individual level you know we get on very very well um, so there's a nice there's a nice collegial kind of relationship to it I mean that's, that's not to say that there aren't times where you know you're not butting heads about marketing this or selling that or money for this but like yeah, they're very cool. Like they have a punk, they have a punk ethos um, that I like, and they're not money grabbing bastards, which I really like because we have dealt with that before too. 